Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is the penultimate game in tonight's PUBG EU Pro Scrims. My name is Jarisar, and we take to the skies of Erangel one more time. There'll be one more after this. And we have a fairly even plane path this time around 10 to 4 o'clock. No scrambling for vehicles to get to North and South George this time around, that is for sure. We've had an interesting variety of games today and certainly some interesting circles. There is no doubt about that. Let's find out where people are going to be going this time around. Relatively well behaved there in our first Erangel game, so I'm not expecting anything uh, by way of rather aggressive hot drops or contests or anything like that. There is, of course, always that moment. But, uh, what we think, is this going to turn into something interesting? Dragon Pump looking like he might be going for a vehicle that Crossco is going for as well. It looks like Gustav might beat him to it. No, he's dipping away. Pacific Esports will get this buggy. Need to make sure he moves away quickly, though, before FaZe Clan get enough vehicles to start shooting. No helmets and no vests. Always a possibility that you get an early knock. Across got able to navigate the dunes quickly enough that we are good to go. Oh, hello! For the second game in a row, it's eSports circle time. How delightful. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, which means this is the 300 IQ parachute coming in from MTB eSports Nail Cop. Saying thank you very much. I will casually divert to Novo. And a yoink. Where's the rest of the... Oh, wait. They're in Rozok. He's in... Eh? Maybe this was the smart move. Or maybe he was AFK in the plane. I couldn't possibly comment. Uh, do, 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 do. And once again, we are as far from Austrian force as we possibly can. Guys, I feel like we know the drill by now. Circle just needs... To Austrian force just do not like circles. That's the theme of tonight's games. It's It's been rough for them, man. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. FaZe should be crossing the bridge relatively early like they did in that last game. Uh, I feel like Sonics are going to move out quicker to take advantage of boats along the coast quicker than they did last game. They will be remembering that scramble where they didn't actually get the boat tation that they wanted to. And that would have been mega frustrating for them. So I'm expecting them to do something different here. This could also be a Jorasar Prophecy game. Now, for those of you who wonder what Jorasar Prophecy game, it's very simple. If the observatory is in when it gets to phase three, this is the rule. Step one, take observatory. Step two, win the game. Whoever has observatory at that point wins the game. So I'm calling it now. I've called it in P... Uh, I've called it at PGC before and I've been right. I remember there was a game. I want to say PGC... Oh, God. 2021 when I was hosting it where I made that prediction. I think the team who was there, it might have even been FaZe Clan, but it might, uh, I forget exactly who it was, but they, they definitely won that game. So it could happen one more time. Anyway, FaZe very much on Sosnovka Island, and no question about that. And look at their Sonics moving out earlier. We were talking about differences between game one and game two. Uh, here on Erangel, well, Sonics, they're getting to the coast significantly sooner than they did before. They're not having to go through other teams. They're feeling relatively chilled out about this. Oh my. FaZe Clan? What? Oh, Nail Cop getting spotted by FaZe instantly. That's a shame. Okay, so maybe Landing Nova wasn't a 3000 IQ move then. That is rough for them. Twisted Minds are going to be following FaZe Clan over the bridge next. They'll be asking themselves, is there anyone here? Do we need to be careful? They should be okay, though. Primal have got the West Bridge. I 
Ay, ay, ay. And Sonic's giving them a little bit of a run for their money. Joguez is actually the only player still to cross the bridge. Are they going to chase? Surely not. Surely not. They're going to give it a go. And Prime will now need to decide if they want to gatekeep Sonic, or so if they want to go further onto Sosnovka Island. Looks like they are going further in. Oh, 762 has taken Observatory. This could be a phase victory. This could be a phase clan win. Sonics and win or die having some minor disagreements and by, ooh, and by minor I mean major Tagleton getting ganged up on Laos and Gusiara both charging up towards the lighthouse Tagleton didn't stand much of a chance they're basically getting bullied by win or die there the rest of Sonics have to decide what they want to do next Shrimpsy. Oh, what a beautiful shot. That's from an M16 from Goose Yara as well up onto the lighthouse. Sonic's overstaying their welcome on the bridge. Quinn and Mai might be able, might be able to gatekeep the rest of them. Entirely possible this happens. <whistles> what? Inside factory on, on Millie. Uh, hello? Okay. Allen Oil inside. Primal outside. Questions being asked of Nuavi. Party Beetle did not get responded to. Jogez, though, says yes, actually. I will take that. I suspect you'll be able to get the res there, and Alan Oil will be able to continue. I don't think Primal wants to contest this at all. Win or die are now thinking, well, Sonics clearly want to gatekeep this. But they also know it's a 2v4. So the question is, what are Huynh and Mime going to do? I'm going to gatekeep this, of course. What kind of setup have Win or Die got? Hyruzen looking down the side, trying to goad some shots. Basically trying to find out if Sonics really are gatekeeping this. Sonics have not yet been baited into shooting. So here they come. Across the bridge. And Sonics are gone. Oh, I wanted this fight. I mean, Sonics have done the smart thing, but I still wanted this fight. I still wanted this fight. Can you guys blame me for wanting this fight? I don't think you can, right? We wanted to see it. We wanted to see Sonics with the epic comeback. Oh, hello. It's happening. Big Boatate. Pacific Esports. With vehicles on the boat as well. Very happy to be moving towards a Novo Stardust, by the way. I've got this. I don't know if they have it under lock and key. Apocalypse might, though, if he goes further up. They're right there. Oh, no. Look at the ferry. He sees him. And he's saying, guys... There's a squad coming in on the ferry. This is big. The ferry's not going to move. They're not going to go anywhere else. Stardust very happy to wait for Pacific to come in. This is going to be quite the welcome party. Probably want to start off with a knock. Here they come in the vehicles. Meta Bay super close. One car down. Oh, and Cross Cow taking the first knock. Won't be able to finish the second. And that's three players down for Pacific Esports. Celtic, though, has gone down as well. 
This is turning very, very problematic very quickly for Pacific Esports. Bluff is the only player left alive, and look who's come to backfill. MTB looking at Stardust, going, you know what? We wouldn't mind a piece of this action either. And if he gets a double headshot onto Apocalypse here... If Apocalypse stays still, he doesn't stay still, but he gets knocked anyway. CTR targeting him at the same time. MTB are coming in with the third party and absolutely maximizing their effectiveness in this fight. Crossco going to bleed out. Bluffist deeper and deeper into Novo he goes. Apocalypse, the only player from Stardust to go down at the moment, so there is a possibility that they um, find a way to return fire and recover from this, but... I don't think Dogs is realistically getting up those steps in time. No, he's not. They're going to have to defend from MTB some other way. Next zone, very much south of Military Island as well. Wow, what's going on? I'm getting kicked out of the Observer interface here. Son manages to absolutely nail Perfectix with Petulins coming in for revenge. He wants some of Son's seconds. Can he hear the footsteps further down? He sees him though, but not quite fast enough. Son gets the first shot off using the AK and a headshot onto Petulins will mean that Twisted Minds are down. Third player down as well. Spyro has exited. And this leaves Twisted Minds with Lou. Lou is literally underneath Blazor. How many first aids has he got? Only four. He's got one-sixth the number of first aids he had on Miramar, and that's Twisted Minds eliminated very early on. Uh, a very scattered engagement against Toxic players, but unfortunately for them, Son just had an excellent time at this 1v2. And that allowed them to pick apart Twisted Minds very, very early on. Observatory still in, as you can see. 762 holding it down for a phase. Stardust now wanting to turn the screw against the Wu. We're down to Quizzy. Is Ibby coming? Ibby is coming. He's here. Yes, Dolotch should also get rezzed. <gasps> and the successful constant pressure from Ibby means that Stardust, who had the potential to go back up, by the way, to three, um, are now just a solo. It's only Metabay. Very, very nicely done. Metabay's not getting away that easy. The rest of the Woo's still continuing to fire into him. If he's driving, could attempt to drive by, but I don't think he's going to be able to get close enough. Metabay goes through. Phase 2 now, remember. Is anyone else still... Solo is still on the north side of the bridge. I don't think uh, anyone's going to be gatekeeping them any longer. Silas for Austrian forces. Is he the last surviving player? He is... Rough times for them in this game. Looking for a vehicle. He'll take that one if it's available. How many tires has it got? You know what? That looks okay. And that looks okay. So he will... Woo! Okay. Jaro Prophecy is off. Because Observatory is not in Phase 3. Okay. So if Phase Clan win this game, it is no longer my fault. Just saying. That is... Oh my god. Okay, that's 55, maybe 60% water slash unplayable if you include the bits at the bottom of the cliffs. This is rough. Everyone is going to be descending upon the... Oh, oh no! Hold on! Okay, that was interesting. Stardust eliminated anyway. Phil first able to come in and finish off Meta Bay. Uh, toxic players need to grab this compound and need to hold on for dear life. I'm not even sure April wants to be on the cliffs right now. I'm, I'm happy just holding position. I feel like Sond might well need a little bit of assistance here. Making a lot of noise to try and dissuade people from coming in. But if it sounds like too much of a fight, then you could end up with people crashing as well. Win or die, moving out. We've got Entropic taking the cliffs on the west side. Win or die, looking like they're going to take the far left. Bluffist. Oh, Bluffist. Poor Bluffist. Oh, no. Wait, what happened? What? What? Okay, I think I suffered a bit of desync there. Bluff is attempting to uh, take out two members of After All. Smoke's coming into obscure vision, but it doesn't actually obscure it quickly enough. Pacific Esports eliminated in 14th place. Solo 
from their trip across the bridge. They're down to so said and Bombilovo. Will be somehow threading a needle through this zone. I say somehow. They haven't done it yet. Oh god, Bombilovo. Having a couple of questions asked of him. Almost running into a tree, but just about surviving that. Toxic players, though, want to come in for a second bite of the apple. That's him down, so said, right behind him. Unfortunately, in another place where several toxic players will be able to shoot at him. Looking for the drive-by. Won't get it. Solo eliminated. 13th place. FaZe Clan now coming into question mark. Listen to that bark. It's the Atex on the Mark 14. Infects his hands. It's extremely dangerous, but the third party means he's going to have limited opportunity to use it. Party people getting him with a very long range spray using the M4. Question mark now continuing to get knocked. It's Doffy this time around. Alan Oil are absolutely taking names by this roadside. Anyone who wants to fight here basically needs their permission to fight Dragon Pump. You're so close to Na'Vi. Do they even know? They do now. That's example finishing them off. And I feel like Na'Vi should be able to come in over the top and finish off FaZe Clan as well. Gustav so close to Uber, but hasn't been spotted. The element of surprise is going to be good enough for him to get the knock. Gustav affects. Where is 762? Oh, he's outside in the blue. He's looking for Na'Vi from up top. The observatory position. He needs to find Alia. Example knocked now. That's where Alia is. 762 is not going to be able to find... This is phase 4 as well. 762 needs to get a wiggle on and rejoin the rest of his team. Navi now down to 1. Navi eliminated now. Fex has found him. 762, that's going to be his cue to get the heck out of Dodge. Very close to bleeding out on top of Observatory there. This is a rough phase 3. Today's circles have been absolutely horrific. The Wu needs to come in over the top on after all. Nixie moving in through the blue in the hopes of getting an, an angle on. I feel like from this rock, should be able to get Hibako. But I don't know if they'll hear him. He's trying exactly this. First aid, then move after alt. Have got their attention divided now. 762 has their attention. This is good news for the Wu. Especially if Ibi and Quizzy fire first. Hibako down. Ayinan is spotted. The down player is taken out first by the Wu. But FaZe Clan actually get the point. Element of surprise gone. Doesn't matter though. Ayinan, the last player standing. Well, standing. Crouching. Not good at all. Fantastic grenade. Almost unlucky there to stop her. Uh, <laughs> this one wall of that shack left. That is rough. After all, it's eliminated in nine. We are now into the placement points at 18 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Eight teams left. Winner die have taken the far west as we predicted that they would earlier. Goose Yara needs to send that car in for repairs sooner rather than later. Lukarux wanting to uh, eliminate the threat early. The reason he's doing this is because he doesn't want win or die to rotate south of the road and take Entropic by surprise if they fight a different team. So he's going to hold this position. If he gets the kills, he'll take them. If he can't spot anyone in a couple of minutes, I don't feel like they need to go further north. It's possible, but I don't feel like they need to. FaZe Clan now eliminated. Uh, that's actually by Booga up top. Uh, former FaZe Clan team, of course. A Diggory. Finishing them off, but it's also partly because Alan Oil forced them into Booga. So FaZe Clan were put in a very uncomfortable position. Their toxic players are so split. I'm so worried for Julian. Like he's doing such a good job of controlling this space, but if he gets knocked, they can instantly push up onto him. Alan Oil as well have had a phenomenal game. Only the three kills, but they've had such a big impact on this circle. Win or die. Now, remember how I said Entropic won't necessarily push north if they can't find win or die? Well, win or die are, are long gone. They're looking to see how far north they can push. 
They've explored that limit now. 30 seconds left before phase five pushes in. And T-Bone... I, I don't know how much closer to T-Bone they want to push, if I'm being perfectly honest. I feel like Booga can sort of get to this position and just wait for win or die. Let me see. So win or die have to come in there. And Booger have got this position here if they want. And this is in zone. Like, this is rough. Win or die are going to have to get some sick headshots. To stop Ooga Booga. Finishing them off here, I think. And if they go back the way they came, then they avoid this fight. But risk running back into Entropic. Very quiet at the moment as teams jostle for position. Toxic players arguably have the most space. They're basically waiting for the Wu to sort of show themselves, but the Wu are not overextending. I think Ibby and Nixie knows that if they overextend to the south, then that restricts Quizzy's ability to spot people up, up north, especially the timing of Booga coming down off of this hill. Which eventually has to happen. Maybe not now, but you'd have to get, what, four hard shifts for them not to have to do that? It's gonna happen, guys. It's gonna happen. Entropic, in the meantime, are holding the ridge that we were talking about earlier. They don't feel the need to push up further. So even though this is quite quiet at the moment, it's playing out exactly like we thought it would. No surprises here. It's very odd having a phase four to phase five where it's this chill, but when you get such crazy action earlier on in the games, this can happen. Allen Oil still look like they're at a decent position. Party Beetle has to be patient. You don't want to be pushing up there and fighting Booga by yourself because that means everyone behind you gets free pot shots at you. Whoa! Okay, so the last circle was very chill. This one, uh -uh, not going to be. Uh, Lucarux and Nailup can move into this position here, and Entropic can effectively hold this almost half of the circle. They're good to go. They could hold this ridge, or they could be a little bit safer and hold down here. Toxic players might have something to say about that. Entropic could even get as far as here if they wanted to be super brave about it, but that would be dead center circle. That is rough. Uga have to come down. Win or die, have no choice. And Luca Rooks knows that they're there. I feel sorry for Alan Oil, who have taken such a good position for so long. Uga are trying to shoot their way down. If they can get a couple of knocks, that might buy them some time to move in through the Wu. But honestly, the Wu have to move as well. It's not the number one position worth fighting for, if I'm being perfectly honest. And Blazor has a position inside circle, although not necessarily the greatest position in terms of spotting everyone else. Not just yet. Alan Oil are going to try and take the road. And with this ridge here, might be a good place to take. I feel like the Wu might agree. Shots coming out now from all over the place. Party Beetle actually can see the Wu. Nixie and Ibby. Oh! Getting sandwiched now by Alan Oil. Beautiful frag grenades. Doffy and NEQ get three members of the Woo between them. Quizzy now. In the bush, waiting for Julian to come along, but he has decided not to push out further. This forces Quizzy out. Beautiful spray transfer. That's two headshots. 
Going for the second flush. Won't quite make it. Julian should be able to get revived. The Wu eliminated in fourth. It is now in Tropic with all four members alive. They have been very patient. We were talking about them holding this dead center position. It looks like they're just going to straight up run towards Toxic. But this isn't actually where the fight was had. He's on top of someone. Luca Rooks was not expecting that. Nail unfortunately gets the trade. Gets the insta res as well onto Luca Rooks, which needs to happen. Julian gets caught off guard. Party Beetle and Go coming off the top. This plays into Entropic's hands for sure. They have time to get the revive up. Entropic back up to four. Alan Oil. Where's Party Beetle? Is he going to get revived? It doesn't look like it. So they're down to three. It's a 4v3 to end here. Feynotto finds Evas. That's big, actually. And Evas was still holding that middle road. No. Oh my goodness. He was up here on the high ground. That would be why uh, Alan Oil would be able to take him out. Party Beetle is going to bleed out, making this a 3v3. Alan Oil on seven kills so far and counting. They arguably have the better position here in phase seven. They can control the pace of the fight because they've got the high ground. And even though Entropic can control when they peak the low ground, Alan Oil simply have the option of not peaking at all should they wish. Nail up right up in their face. He's going to be the Joker in the pack. Imagine Nail up getting a grenade knock there. Luke Rooks headshotting Feynotto. Would be the next best thing. Entropic trying to push. Luke Rooks realizing belatedly that's not necessarily a good idea. Nail up was thinking about it. Grenades coming in. Any Q gets knocked as well. Now this is the time for Entropic to push up. Winning two different 1v1s. Doffy getting damage done to him as well. Trying his best to get Feynotto out in the smoke, but he is knocked and flushed. NEQ super close, giving info on Nail Up, but knowing that he is here by the ridge isn't particularly helpful information right now. Doffy now technically out of the next circle, trying to reposition, but this is properly a 1v3. It is actually reset into a plain old 1v3. And Alan Oil, from a position where they had the high ground, suddenly are playing into Entropic's hands like nobody's business. He's got a frag grenade. He can deny the point if he really wants. He's going to smoke wall and try and come in over the top, maybe? Ah, oh, he knows that someone is still on the bottom. Did he spot Luca Rooks by the tree? Yes, he did. He can get this knock. Onto Luca Rooks. Beautiful, beautiful headshot. 65 damage. Luca Rooks is going to be reporting exactly where Doffy is. Excellent frag grenade. The follow-up could be good enough. It's not quite. Flashbang's coming out now. Ooh. Molotov got shot out of midair. And Nail Up will finish. Eight kills for Entropic as they get the victory here in game number five of six. Just one game left to go in this evening's PUBG EU Pro Scrims. Very well done to them. In second place, we have Alan Oil with seven kills. In third place, also with seven kills, we've got Toxic Players.